Hey, welcome to the Electronics channel. I'm Dave Williams. In this video, I want to do a bit of a summary about impedances. Now, impedance is a measure of how inductors, capacitors, or resistors, or a combination of, of those, any of those three, impedes current in a circuit. And what impedance does is describe the relationship between voltage and current for inductors, capacitors, and resistors, specifically when voltages and currents are sinusoidal. So if I have a voltage source, like I do here, that's sinusoidal, I can describe that voltage source as a phasor. And I can say that that voltage is equal to some amplitude and some phase angle. Or I could say that it has some magnitude in the x direction and some magnitude in the y direction, or more specifically, in the real direction and in the imagi imaginary direction. And that voltage gets applied across this impedance which is going to impede the current somehow, and the current that results is also a phasor that's going to have some magnitude and some phase angle. Or I can again describe this as having a current in the, a magnitude in the real direction and in the imaginary direction. And this value of impedance, or Z, is the relationship, or the ratio, of the voltage over the current. And that impedance is going to have an effect both on the magnitude and on the phase angle. So if that element in the circuit is a resistor, then I can describe the impedance of that resistor, ZR, again being this relationship of voltage over current, which I can split into my voltage as a magnitude and a phase angle and the current I can split it into its magnitude and its phase angle. And I know that in a resistor, voltage and current are in phase with each other. So that means that these two values, theta V and theta I, are equal to each other. So my result is V over I with a phase angle of zero, which is the same as R with a phase angle of zero, where R is simply the resistance of that resistor. When a voltage is applied across an inductor, that an inductor also impedes the current. And I will have this relationship VL over IL as phasors. And I can split that into the magnitude of voltage and the phase angle of voltage and the magnitude of current and the phase angle of the current. And I know that voltage leads the current in an inductor. So the relationship between these two phases, and so I know the relationship between those two phases, theta of the voltage and the phase angle of the current is 90 degrees, so that when I do this calculation, I get VL over IL as the magnitude, and the phase angle between them is going to be 90 degrees. And I can express VL over IL as the reactance, or XL, with a phase angle of 90 degrees. So the impedance of an inductor is equal to the reactance of the inductor with a phase angle of 90 degrees. And this reactance, unlike with a resistor where it's just a fixed value, the reactance of an inductor is dependent on frequency of that sinusoidal voltage and current, and is equal to 2 pi times the frequency times the inductance of the inductor. And finally, when I apply a voltage across a capacitor, that capacitance is going to impede the current, and the relationship between the voltage and current is going to be simply the ratio of those two, but those two phasors. So I can split those phasors up into the magnitude part and the phase angle part. And I know that current leads voltage by 90 degrees. So this value of theta V minus theta I is going to be equal to 90 degrees. So when I do this phasor calculation here, I get VC over IC for the magnitude part, and my phase angle part is going to be minus 90 degrees. And I can rewrite this as XC as the relationship of the magnitude of voltage over current with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. And this XC, reactance of the capacitor, is frequency dependent, just like it is for the inductor, and the value is 1 over 2 pi times the frequency 
times the capacitance of that capacitor. I have three simple examples here. All of them have a 120 volt, 60 hertz sine wave voltage as the source applied across a 10 ohm resistor, a 26.5 millihenry inductor, and a 265 microfarad capacitor. And what I want to do is find out what is the current in each of these cases. In this case, the current is going to be the voltage divided by the impedance of the resistor, which is 10 ohms with a phase angle of zero degrees. Dividing these phasors, look at the magnitude part, 120 volts over 10 ohms gives me 12 amps. Phase angle is zero minus zero gives me a phase angle of zero degrees. For the second example here, again, current is going to be the voltage divided by the impedance. And this time the impedance is the impedance of this inductor here. Well, I know that the inductor is 26.5 millihenries. I want to know what the reactance of it is. So that's the value that was 2 pi FL. So 2 times pi times 60 hertz times 26.5 millihenries gives me a value of 10 ohms. So the magnitude of the impedance is 10 ohms. And of course, the phase angle is 90 degrees. So this is going to give me a current of 12 amps but the phase angle is minus 90 degrees to indicate that the current is lagging behind the voltage by 90 degrees. Final example. Same relationship, current is voltage over impedance. Same voltage, 120 volts with a phase angle of zero degrees. The impedance is going to be the impedance of this capacitor that has a value of 265 microfarads. I need to figure out the reactance of that capacitor, Xc, is equal to 1 over 2 times pi times the frequency times the capacitance. So I can plug my numbers in and I get a value of 10 ohms again. You can see I picked the capacitor and inductor values purposely to give me an, a reactance of 10 ohms. So my impedance that I'm dividing the voltage by will be 10 ohm magnitude and a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. So when I do the voltage over the impedance I get a magnitude of 12 amps again, and my phase angle will be zero minus negative 90 degrees to give me a phase angle of 90 degrees, indicating that the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. So that gives you a very brief summary and hopefully a review of the impedance of a resistance, the impedance of an inductor, and the impedance of a capacitor. So I hope that was a good refresher for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.